You have a prepaid call from an inmate at Cabo, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using... Hello? How you doing, brother? Hello? How you doing, brother? Hey, how you doing, brother? Well, I'm, I'm doing good. good. How about yourself? Uh, man, I'm doing I'm doing as good as can be. Yeah, I'm doing a little bit better today. My spirits are up. I'm okay. Just, you know, struggling with the pain, you know? Oh, I hear you, brother. So you mentioned you want to remain anonymous for this interview, correct? No, you know what? You know what? I don't have the thing is I don't have a picture. You know what I mean? So I mean when they when they check through the internet, they check my my posting. Who wants to want to show like my booking picture on the like my ID card? Okay, so with that my, so with that being said, there will be no picture in, up for this interview. So what do you go by? Yeah, that's cool. Uh, Flacco. FLACO. Now be aware, this this is a different Flacco apart from my conflict's perspective. What are you convicted of? I'm, I'm convicted of uh, first degree burglary. How long is your sentence? Three counts. What? Uh, 19 years. 19 years. How long have you been incarcerated? I've been incarcerated since 2008. So I've been about 14, 15 years. Were you uh, ever years. were you ever part of any gangs, prison gang groups or organizations? Yes, I was I was involved with the Nuestra Raza uh, structure. So where are you from out here in the streets? I'm from a, a little a little barrio it's called Rio Seco. It's a BRS in San Jose, California. What made you join the organization? This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. It was like a, uh, an acceptance thing. You know, I didn't have family, so I, I took the, the people that I grew up around that were involved in gangs and stuff as my family, you know? So it was, it was uh, I wanted to make a name for myself, and I just, I just, uh, I, um, I, I thought that that was my family. I thought the security there, you know? What exactly was your position within the organization? Well, I was, I was, I, they would drive me around and, and ID people and, and I was a foot soldier at one time and they would, that later on during that, I went into full function and I, they would drive me around and ID people and people would get old, pulled over by the cops and I would, I would tell the, the higher up that, you know, they got pulled over by the cops and they're talking and I would set people up and, I would uh, do things that I had to do, you know, to survive, you know, within the guidelines and the bylaws of the, of the organization, you know. When you first got sentenced, how you feel about it? And when you first went to prison and hit the main line, what was your, what was your mentality? My mentality was, was uh, I'm going to strive for a better, better, uh, some, for, for some better in my future. I wanted to be involved with the gangs, uh, with the familia. I wanted. I was happy to go to prison. You know, I was. I was. Uh, I was. Uh, I was just happy to, you know, to be be able to function with someone. You know. What do you have to do to prove yourself within the organization? I had to do whatever they said. You know. What is the rules and regulations? Go ahead, go ahead, brother. If it meant hurting people, then that's what I had to do, you know. I had, I learned to be honest with people even if it hurt people, you know. And uh, I uh, I developed my understanding that that uh, there was nothing more more important than the organization itself, you know. So if I had to put aside my old attitude and look forward to a new future, you know within the organization, you know. What is the rules and regulations within the organization? It's blood in, blood out. You know, you mess up, you die, you know. You, uh, there's a lot of rules and regulations to the organization that, you know, can't be, you know, really talked about, you know. It's, it's how you, 
how you uh, how you function with them, you know, and different rules for different people, you know. What are things that get individuals removed from their guard? And acts acts of treason, acts of uh, um, predatorial stuff, uh, um, speaking with the your your organization members' family, or you know, having a having a any type of relationship outside of the organization, they would put they put it in jeopardy, you know. Like, like, say, if I went to another organization and slept with the with the woman, they found out stuff about my organization. That was the only reason why she was sleeping with me. That would be a breach of my security, so I would have to pay for that. You know. What are the consequences behind these? There's different different consequences. Some some you get you get uh, beat up. Some you get stabbed. Some some you get uh, killed. It's a it's a whole different different uh, scenario of, of of rules and regulations that that surround that that uh that area. You know, some people don't get killed; they get disciplined. You know, and they either get sliced with the razor uh, on their neck or on their face, sign of disfigurement, or they uh they uh get socked up or they, they uh get killed. You know. Did you ever do a shoe term? Yes. I've done a shoe term in Corcoran, and I've done, a, I've done another shoe term in San Quentin. When San Quentin in 94, when it was when it was still functioning as a, as a reception center, you know? And how long was your shoe term? I, I got a two-year shoe term, and uh, you, you gotta understand, my shoe term is, is indefinite. I've been in, I've been in CYA, Boys Ranch, and uh, prison, and all my time during during the time I've been down, I've I've put 35 years in the system already, off and on. But it adds up to like 35 years, and most of that time there's no been no reform. You know, I mean, there's been no 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 nothing. I know nothing but gang banging. You know, I know nothing but uh, but being locked up. Being in my cell all day, all night, not not doing anything. So the security around the organization brought me peace and it brought me uh, humbleness, and it brought me it brought me a new family to, to be able to teach me how to read and write and uh, do the things that were that were mandatory within the organization, you know. And so I don't look down on them. I I I've learned a lot from them, and and uh, I still look at them as as uh. My family, you know. And um, so, you know, I, go ahead, brother. I mean, I I committed an act of treason, you know, against my my family, you know. So now I'm left alone to do like, what I got to do to survive, you know. And it's not easy, you know. It, it's uh, so different world, you know. So you're interested in uh, gang and prison prevention. Tell us why. Because I have to do something to to, to better myself to understand my my uh, reasons for for my wrongs. You know, for doing the things I've done wrong in my life. And uh, I want to I want to take the steps to, to correct the things that I can. You know, and accept the things that I can change. You know, with. In order for me to do that, it's being able to communicate with people that have questions questions about how people how people are in prison and, and how they survive doing time. You know, it's not easy. You know, I've, I've lost a lot. My my family. I've lost uh, my friends. My, I've lost everything I I stood for. I've lost. You know, and and uh, now I got to stand for something because. I'm still, I'm still a person. I'm a human being, and and I have to strive for betterment. Even if there's no betterment that I can see, foresee in my future, you know, I still have to strive for something, you know. Even if it's a struggle for daily struggle within within what I'm doing, you know, for a betterment, you know. 
it's a, uh, I don't know, I, I can't understand, uh, I, I don't know how to answer the question. I hear you, brother. Well, um, what advice, what you have to say uh, to the youngsters that um, want to join gangs and um, organizations and prison gangs and things of that nature? Listen to your uncles, listen to your, to your father, you know, listen to the people that are out there trying to, trying to talk to them, trying to, trying to stir them the right way, you know, I, when I was a youngster, I would, I would, people used to tell me, hey Jimmy, do this, do that, don't, don't do this, don't do that, but I was a hard-headed youngster and I, I thought that people were telling me stuff to This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. And, um. When, when they were telling me stuff to manipulate me, I would catch an attitude towards that, and I would be real rebellious towards that and vulnerable to it, doing the wrong thing, you know? And uh, I would tell them, you know what, man? It's, uh, I can show you better than I can tell you, you know what I mean? I, I can show them all the scars on my body. I can show them the, the scars that I've had, inner, inner, inner scars that I had that you can't see. Um, I just... I, I want a betterment for them too, you know what I mean? For them first, you know, because they're, they're our future, you know, and, and uh, they need to be talked to, they need to be ran down on, on what, what they have to do in life and what they, what they can, can consider doing in life. And, you know, I would tell them to stay in schools, go to school for, you know, check out the chicks, set a foundation, set a future, struggle with yourself. I mean, in low-income neighborhoods and everything, it's hard for us to reach out for anybody that, that uh, it's not only in the low-income neighborhoods, but a percent, a big percentage is in low-income neighborhoods uh, where people are, they don't have the mother, they don't have the father, and they don't have the, the stability, you know, to, to keep on going to school and, and, to, and to continue going to school. So I would open, like, something up where the centers and stuff, they close centers now, and, you know, where we used to be able to go up to and, and box and and do things, play basketball or soccer or whatever, you know, and they don't even have centers no more for for youngsters to go to so they, they could uh, have something, you know, to, to occupy their time with, you know. And um, so so I would encourage that, you know what I'm saying? I, I do encourage that, as a matter of fact, you know, I mean, that's, Show them how to work on computers. Show them how to do the things that we're missing, you know, in low-income neighborhoods. You know, there's always something that that's, that's missing in every in every area and every aspect of our life that we ignore, you know, because we ain't got no one telling us or, or trying to school us down the right way, you know. And then and then again, who's who's the same or who's even doing it the right way, you know? I mean, we're all human. We got flaws, you know. So it's like. We just could do the best we can, you know. That's all I'm, I'm trying to do is the best I can, you know. If I see something, I'm not trying to preach to anybody. I'm just trying to let them know, hey, what if you try it out this way, man? I'll try it out with you, you know, and uh, take it from there, you know. So is that part of your plans when you get out, whenever you get released? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. That's, I'm out. I'm, I was plugged in with an organization called JAM. It's a community. You have 60 seconds remaining. It's a community homeless alliance ministry, and um, the pastor's name is, is Pastor Scott Wagers, and he's he's a uh, he's a uh, located in San Jose, California, and um, he's a uh, he's, he's he's been there through, through some hard times with me. You know, he's he's a uh, I've used to do gang intervention with him when I was when I was uh, feeling down and out and stuff, and I needed to, needed to get off my my high horse, you know, and he helped me uh, through the grace of God, you know, um, some things worked out for me, you know. Yeah, it's it's about like like uh, how how like the undesirable and the uh, and the misfits in, in society are are treated, you know what I mean? And uh, it's a struggle for everybody to get through what we got to get through in life, you know. But the, the main thing is stay positive and strive for betterment, you know, for a movement that you believe in, you know, that's positive, you know. And uh I I, I find myself in, in, in my in my in my journey through prison and, and, and everything that I've been to, I've learned a lot, you know, to to what I've what I've experienced in life, you know, physically and mentally, you know, and uh 
the main thing is not giving up, you know what I mean? Once we give up, we, we give up the fight, we give up the struggle to fight for something that we believe in, you know? And, and if it's just for one little thing that we believe in, like getting, getting our family back together or, 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 or setting the goal to, to, to go home or, or anything, you know, it's, it's, uh, they, they told me, I talked to, I, this might sound strange to you, man, but I want to be real. I talked to God before I, before I got arrested, you know, and, uh, the Lord told me that I was going to get arrested. And, uh, he, uh, he told me that, uh, I'm not getting out until I'm, until I'm, until I'm grounded with it, you know what I mean? And, uh, so I believe that anything's possible, you know? And, uh, I take that and I strive for it every day, you know? Every day I strive for, for, for that reason is this, to be able to get out and help somebody that needs to help, you know what I mean? And I can only relate to people that, 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 uh, that, um, they have the same, the same, uh, I, I know we have to win people over in life. We have to win people over to, to, uh, agree to disagree, you know? And, uh, that's been a big part of my journey is agreeing to disagree. So being stubborn and, and being closed off to, to what we feel is, is wrong or, or right is, is something we, we, we don't need to study the arts of war. We don't need to study the, and, 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 uh, and the stuff like that that, we're, that we have to study when we're in prison through the organizations. We have to study a book that's going to mean something like to, to study about history or mathematics or something that's going to benefit us, you know, in, in, in the matters in, in, our, in our society these days, you know. It's, it's uh, something that's positive. We don't need to learn how to manipulate people. We, we don't need to learn the things that are going to bring us bring us hardship in the future, you know, like, like it has to me, you know, but I would just, I would just try and put my advice out there that, that there is a better man, there's hope for everybody, you know, and, uh, and I respect the fact that you guys open your doors to people like us because it means something, it means a lot to me, you know, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's a struggle, you know, to, to know that, to know that we have to do something in our lives to, to be able to be strong, you know, and, and, uh, I, I don't know, I, I, I'm biting my tongue now, so, I mean, I, I just try and put my point out there real quick, you know, and, uh, the education's everything, you know, and, uh, that's all I want to do is, is just get connected with people that, you know, can help me, uh, get on track, you know, keep me on track, you know, and, uh, that's all I want in my life, you know. I want to be able to help people, help the youngsters, even if it's just, just a little advice that I can give them. That I have a son that's 28 years old, and uh, he's a he's a psych tech right now. His mom, his uh, mom's mother and, and father raised him during that time where he's where he's a youngster. I was always locked up, so his parent, his grandparents raised him, and uh, and uh, and I felt like a failure. But, uh, because I wasn't there for him during his life, and, and, uh, so everything, everything that's happened, transpired in his life, he, 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 I hope he's able to reflect the fact that I miss him, I love him, and, uh, I wish I was there for him, you know? How was it like, you know, growing up, like, um, you know, in, in, in the hood of San Jose, like, what made you actually join a street gang? What what influences were there, and what what did they tell you, you know, to make you, you know, to you know, get you to join a street gang? Well, I felt I felt like uh, I felt like um, like uh, I had to be part of it, you know. I I had to be uh, part of the neighborhood. I, what made me join is 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 uh the desire I had to, to be, to make a name for myself, you know, and to, uh, be plugged in with the older dudes and, and, and to, uh, do the things we had to do within the gang to, to support ourselves and, and to, uh, to, uh, gain power over, over others, you know, and, uh, so I, I, I kind of like, I took it and I, and I, and I ran with it, you know, I ran for it, I ran with it, like, 
like uh, it was my family, like I was saying, you know, and and um, uh, I, you know, I still, I, I seen, I see some old, old partners, old friends, and this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. I'm not on the same page as them anymore, you know. I've, I've grown up out of that, you know, and uh, I see young youngsters like that, you know. Uh, uh, it hurts me inside to know that they're going to have to go through what I went through. They're going to have to make a decision whether to be a part of it or to be a part of something else that's going to be beneficial for them, you know. And it's going to be hard to to decipher what, what they have to decipher, you know. So it's a uh, it was just my pride, you know, to 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 become part of something that that uh, I knew existed in in a in a good way, you know. For, for my future, you know, to be, become a, a prisoner, to become uh, somebody that that had power, status, and uh, that was looked at as, as as a somebody because as it stood, I was a nobody, and I didn't have no hope, and I didn't have no family, I didn't have nothing, no, no, nothing there to support me, you know, so I looked at it as support coming from the gang was, was, was number one and foremost, you know what I mean? So I basically to answer your question, I was just I was just I wanted to be part of it because I wanted to make a name for myself, you know. So you brought up your old friends and um you know, so they're probably looking at you as um a different type of way, right? Or you you're probably getting ostracized. Yeah. How how you feel about that? It don't bug me no more, you know. If I if I was thinking negative now nowadays if I was thinking like like, uh, I wanted to be part of something negative, and uh, I would probably care what people thought about me, but I'm past that stage now. I'm, I'm past the point to where I, I don't need, I don't need that, uh, that, uh, that, that, uh, well, how, how do you call it, that, um, uh, I don't need that, uh, validation, you know what I mean? I don't need the validation from anybody now, except for my, if I know I'm doing the right thing and I, I know I can help my friends out, I still have friends from my neighborhood that, that uh, are out there doing the same thing, partying, gangbanging, and if I see them and they see me, you know, it's, it's all on good terms, you know, I, I don't join in what they're doing, but I, I try and, uh, I try and uh, be, be positive with them, you know, and uh, sometimes they can't understand that, but it's, it's all part of life that I'm going through, you know. So it's all part of this crazy life, you know. We, we have to we have to know where to get people at the right time, you know, and and uh, be able to mold them to to become something better than what they are, you know. I know that's so that's what some people did for me, you know, and and um, they're still doing it for me, and you uh, know. So I'm just just looking for the my old friends and everything like that. And it's, they're they're people just like me, and they'll hit their point where where they're gonna either change or they're gonna die, you know. I lost a lot of friends, a lot of a lot of homeboys, a lot of homegirls, and uh, in the gang, and and uh, and now if I see them, I wanna I wanna be able to talk to them positive, you know, be able to be able to get at them righteous, you know, really righteous, not not the righteousness from the from the gang thing, but the righteousness from the Lord thing, you know what I mean? How do you think they would respond to that? I mean. That'd be- um, well, for some are you, are you going to go back? To the, are you going to go back to the same neighborhood when you get out, or are you going to, you know, be in a different yeah. city, or different yeah. state? What are your plans when you get out? And well, how would my you, plans are. Yeah. It's, it's, my okay. plans basically are to, to to find something to be grounded with it. You know what I mean? So I'm going to occupy my time doing something positive, like going to AA meetings or NA meetings, or talking to my pastor, going to church. Uh, just trying to stay busy, you know, uh, set up car washes and trying to, you know, set a, a little thing up with the gang intervention, you know, to get involved with it, you know. My friends are to get involved with gang intervention, you know, so. And I, I know a lot of people frown on that, you know, and within the organization because you're taking soldiers or good soldiers away from. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. He's taking their good soldiers away from their posts, but uh, I don't care about none of that no more. You know, I mean, I'm 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 securing what I stand for, so I don't have to play a part. You know, as long as I'm doing the right thing, I'm I'm not going to be touched by them. You know. You have 60 seconds remaining. 
All right, brother. You got anything else to say before we close this interview? Any final words? Nah, not really. Okay. I just, you know, strive for betterment within yourself and, and find it, you know, and, and stay grounded in it and, and uh, don't settle for less than what you're worth, you know? All right.